Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video. Today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we have got one system from the user Stare in Discord to view. It's called the Atlas System. So without further ado guys, we're going to hop straight into it. So where are we? So, so we're, in the, we're currently in the system I just viewed um, in the previous episode. So uh, here we go, the Atlas System. Let's see what we have got. Okay. Right. Oh, that's a lot of reading. <laughs> right. Okay. Right, oh my god, okay. We've got a pretty big one, right. The Atlas system is a system containing the core star Atlas. The star is slightly more massive than our sun, but significantly more luminous. It's slightly older than the sun, but won't be a red giant for another 4 billion years. Now on to what you want to see, the planets. This is a lore-heavy system. Whoa, oh my god. That is monstrous. That's absolutely monstrous. Oh my god. Right. Oh, it's going to be quite difficult with... Uh, they're all, there's no paragraphs, they're all in one giant paragraph. Oh my god. Okay, so first up we got Lucifer. I apologise if I miss anything because I could skip a line somewhere here. Um, brace your vocal cords for the reading. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> right, so. Um, Antigaia, Lucifer and Hellspawn were originally all part of a luscious green planet named Gaia but they were almost flung into Atlas after a close encounter with a passing brown dwarf. The planet was ripped apart and formed a small belt around the star, which became the three planets. They are no longer green or luscious. Instead, they are hellscapes of blazing temperatures. Some asteroids did not get combined and either got absorbed by the star or became moons for the two more massive planets. There used to be a civilization on Gaia, but they were eradicated by this event. The smallest one, Hellspawn. So is this... Uh, that's Lucifer. Where's Hellspawn? Uh, okay, so the smallest one, Hellspawn... Oh, I completely lost where I was. Uh, no, 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 no. It's classified an asteroid, and the only one isn't a moon. So then we have uh, Fre Freelis. Um, it's a planet that used to be closest to the star. So that is this one here. Um, it is constantly losing lots of mass, but will probably stick around. That is a cool looking one. But probably uh, stick around. Um, for a couple more million years before it completely disappears. There was no civilization for it ever, and no satellites were ever stationed orbiting this planet until recently. Okay. Uh, scientists on the planet um, Atlante uh, thought it was part of the anti Gaia crew until the late 2000s. Or, or Tani and Ormi used to be part of a binary orbit, but they were separated through the Brown Dwarf. Okay, let me just cover the rest of the inner solar system first as well. So we've done Hellspawn, we've got Lucifer here, that's the closest of the planets. So there it is, that's a pretty, uh, pretty deadly looking red one there. Okay, and then anti guy over here. Okay, so that's the third of those original three. Okay, so where are we? So next up we have got Oranti. Um, they used to be part of a binary orbit. So that's the Oranti and or or Sano over there. Okay, cool. It was so close to the passing brown dwarf for only life and it was cooked to death. It was only lucky that it didn't have the same fate as Gaia. Ortani still has life on it, although most complex organisms have fled the planet to find refuge in safer planets because of the hot temperature. Ortani also has a moon called Alkaline, which has a purple atmosphere that is purple. Okay, so zoom all the way in here. So that should be, there it is there. Cool. It's quite similar to Titan. Cool. Okay. A nice uh, thick atmosphere going on there as well. It also has um, yeah, there's a probe or something in orbit as well. Cool. So Orsano is a planet similar to Titan. Its atmosphere is made up mostly of uh, mostly of condensed hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. The uh, organisms of uh, or Ortanti flew here. Nobody knows if they are still here. Probes have explored the planet have found no traces of water. But the SNG has stated that no life on the planet is virtually impossible due to uh, organisms or Ranti's very high technical advancements. Maybe they're still here, maybe they're not. Uh, Atlante is the planet the most... Okay, so we're on the next one now, okay. So... Yeah, the lack of paragraphs does make it quite difficult to go read through. Um, it's the planet that most intelligent organisms live on. So this is the Earth-like world in the system. So... Uh, where are we? Uh, is uh, because of the more intelligent ones will die. It's the main producer of satellites in the system. You'll see lots of the civilization satellites. Yeah, I saw some. Um, however, it's thin atmosphere means that organisms on this planet have to buy oxygen to survive, making a huge class difference. Even though oxygen is very easy to make and also sells for really cheap, it has one moon, uh, Sterling, St Sterling, uh, over here, there. 
The organisms that live on the planet frequently war with the organisms on the planet uh, Satayan. The brown dwarf had the least effect on this planet. And then we have, uh, okay. So, the next planet out is over here. So I tell you, it's a planet that, that had no life until the brown dwarf changed its orbit. Life evolved rather quickly, so quickly in fact that some people in Atlanta think it was there already before it got kicked into the natural zone by the brown dwarf. But scientists argue this is impossible due to lack of water and air before that time. The organisms here frequently go to war with the ones, yes, we just read that, okay, cool. Nice. Next up we have got Seran over here. It's a planet that used to have life on it, but the organisms that were on the planet produced too much gases and filled the atmosphere and it killed all of them. Seren stands lifeless till this day. The planet might look appealing, but the pink texture is because of the plutonium in a gaseous state that is extremely radioactive and will kill you before you breathe it in. Or kill you if you breathe it in. The gases advanced so much that even Seren's moon got contaminated. So the gas has somehow managed to pass through the void, through the vacuum to get here. Now that's some pretty, uh, pretty wacky stuff. Right. Okay, um, efforts have been made to try and rehabitate this planet, but they were all in vain. Uh, Festiva and Unfesta are also planets that used to be in a binary system. They were born together, but everything changed when the Brown Dwarf Nation attacked. So, exactly where are they? So, Festiva and Un... Where are those guys? Oh, okay, here they are. Yeah, so here's one. So, that's in a binary or something else at the moment. So, there it is. And then you got this one, Neo Festi over here. Okay, and then uh, Unfestiva is the other one over here. So used to be the binary system, everything changed till the Brown Dwarf Nation attack. Uh, Festiva was relatively arm harm, but Unfestiva was cooked to its core, making it look very unappealing. Life on both these planets ceased to exist after the Brown Dwarf passed through the system. Recently, uh, Festiva has obtained another companion called Neo Festi, that's the one we just saw. Since uh, they both have interests in orbit, scientists in Atlanta believe that they will eventually collide and become Mega Festiva one day. With Neo Festi probably just getting ejected. Okay. Well, I've still got even more. Look at this. So much reading. So we've got a blue one over here. So Cleo uh, Patra is the most saluted planet in the system. It doesn't reflect much light, and there is no life here. Um, and it will probably be the case until the end of time. It's blue methane uh, atmosphere and oceans hint at methane. It has two moons, Napoleon and Caesar. Other than that, not much is known about this weird planet. So yeah, pretty dark here. And then it's got two moons. Uh, both of which are there. Okay. Right, next up we've got Axo, so that's over here. It's the first of the two gas giants known by Atlante to be found. So one minute it's called Atlante, the next minute it's called Atlanta. So, I don't know, which, which one is it? Uh, I think it's Atlante um, to be found in the system. It's purple due to the high amounts of carbonated magnesium inside of it. It also has many moons, the dominant of which being a gas dwarf that doesn't even have much mass as Earth, named Yuna. Obviously no life is found on the gas giant or any of its moons. So, there's a unit there. Cool. Poor Dinas is the second and last of these gas giants known by Atlante to exist. So, that's this one over here. Um, it is blue due to the high amounts of colorized cholesterol in its high conduct state at its core. It has many moons. There's a brown dwarf or something over there. Um, <laughs> has uh, both civilizations, it's not far enough to be able to, uh, are completely lost rebels. High conduct states of its core. It has many moons, none are hospital in human life. No satellites have been deployed here yet due to its far distance. Both of the civilizations in the system have not developed far enough for this to be possible. So this is like beyond the distance in Neptune then I guess from our own solar system standards it's just not reachable. So pretty cool. And it also has some moons as well. Nice. Okay, so now we're taking a jump. So Opulence is undiscovered by the two civilizations. This is one even further out. Uh, Fast unclassified. It's third gas giant orbiting the main star. It doesn't have any important moons in its pink texture. It's used the high amounts of hydrogen turned pinkish with gravity uh, life. Like small bacteria that feast upon hydrogen may be found here. Okay, Necro... It was the brand of that caused so much damage to the system. I knew it. I knew that object would be somewhere. So, whoa. Oh, there it is. Right. Uh... What we know is it actually bonded itself to an orbit of Atlas to be thrown back into the system with such force that it completely ejected. So it's actually in a binary with one called Egg Roll. <laughs> so there's the brown dwarf still hanging on to life. Okay. Cool. Um, thrown back into the system with such force that it was completely ejected. Uh, and it's, yes, it almost destroyed everything, basically, this object. The organisms think Necromancer is actually just a normally bright star, and they named it, though. The name of. Uh, Necrom uh, I, I cannot say these names, I'm so sorry. It is also fair to be the name of destruction, Armageddon. Good luck though. 
Ares is a planet orbiting the brown dwarf. So that's this one here. Uh, let's see. Uh, life is not found here as it is too hot. When Necro Zuma is launched to the system, it may escape and become a rogue planet or collide into the brown dwarf. The chances of it surviving and staying... Um, uh, surviving and staying as a planet of the brown dwarf are very unlikely. Okay. There's also one called Percy. Percy is a planet that is responsible for the low volcanic activity of Ares due to its gravitational pull bracketing. It is also considered very close to its parent star. Like Io, it has a deep blue in shade and honestly looks pretty satisfying. Life may exist here, but if it does, it only exists in single-celled uh, prochaos like bacteria. It may also be known as a star option atlas, but it was stolen by um, the brown dwarf when it travelled through the system. Okay, and then lastly, we have Egg Roll. It's the third planet orbiting the Brown Dwarf and is a gas giant. Okay, it has a distinctively yellowish hue with minor changes making it look like the casing of an Egg Roll, hence the name. It has three moons, Veggies, and Mold. That's basically it. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this thing, I guess. Hope you had a good time reading the lore. Yeah, I did, yeah. I mean, apologies for the butchering pretty much every single name in here, but yeah, over, other than that, I mean, yeah, I like it. So this is a Brown Dwarf that caused a lot of chaos in the system, as mentioned in... Uh, other parts of the description so yeah pretty cool so got a lot of map territory then there's a one gas giant that is unknown to the civilizations and you've got the hidden brown dwarf that they think is a star still so pretty cool pretty cool indeed so there is the um atlas system so yeah honestly a very very nice system and yeah that's some of the users stare in discord so massive thank you to them for submitting this but yeah that all said and done guys make sure you have a great day out there and yeah, let me know what you think of this system uh, down below in the comments. But yeah, that was said and done. Like I said, make sure you have a great day. Subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 24,000 subscribers before the midway through part of March. Oh, not March. May, sorry. So let's see if we can try and hit 24,000 before midway through May. That would be absolutely amazing. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But yeah, that was said and done, guys. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.